a girl a running in a group. She had a high speed motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hotter, Hotter, and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. We're talking about different things in the car business. We're running through the car business right now. And I just had a story about the dealers and they're finally passing some laws to make these guys come clean and sell you a car and just the car and not sell you all kinds of foo for all with it. Look, I, I for one appreciate that they sell me extra blinker fluid. Extra blinker fluid. It was only there an extra hundred dollars so, a month. Yeah, see. But it was well worth it. Would you like to subscribe yeah. to Blinker Fluid Anonymous? Right. They send me a, a, a one gallon of blinker fluid every month. It's a great I deal. I mean, it's just amazing. Blinker Fluid of the Month Club. Yeah, it's just amazing. It's like yeah, Fruit of the Month Club. Oh, these guys are something else. Well, earlier this month, the U.S. Court of Appeals reversed an NLRB, National Labor Relations Board, decision that said Tesla violated federal labor law by barring workers at the Fremont assembly plant from wearing UAW (laughs) t-shirts. More on this later. I don't have any more on this except that Tesla has denied wrongdoing in these cases. This is... (laughs) You know, I think we should. I'm going to start a new uh, a new bingo game. Every acronym that you use, we're going to keep track of. So far, you've done NADA, NLRB. Oh God, F&I. there's so many. There is so many, Chuck. We got to put them at the bottom of the screen so everybody knows what you're talking about. I know, I know, it's crazy. Well, here, you know, in Tesla, whether it, they do right or wrong, or whether you like them or not, they don't always mess up. And this is another one. Okay. Here we go. U.S. Labor Board has dismissed claims that Tesla Inc. illegally fired employees working on an autopilot software at the New York factory to put an end to union organizing. A National Labor Relations Board, here we are again, NLRB regional official on Friday tossed out a complaint filed in February by Workers United a union seeking to organize workers at Tesla's Buffalo, New York, Gigafactory. I like that word, Gigafactory. Don't you like that word, Chuck? I don't know what it means, but it's a Gigafactory. It must be big or something. It's a lot of watts. A lot of watts? A lot of watts. A lot of watts. So what's the deal? What's the deal, man? Workers United claim that within days of announcing a union campaign earlier this year, Tesla fired dozens of workers from its autopilot department. Tesla has said the firings were based on performance reviews and not tied to union activity. That's pretty hard to pretty hard to prove, you know. If they proved it, then they, they win. The labor board official, however, found merit in two separate claims that Tesla maintained an unlawful rule on the acceptable use of technology in the workplace and solicited grievances from workers in an attempt to thwart support for the union, the National Labor Relations Board said. Spokesman, their spokesman, Kayla Blado said, or Blado said on uh, Monday, if Tesla does not settle these claims, the NLRB will issue a complaint against the company that will be heard by an administrative judge, Blado, or Blado says. Okay, Tesla and the Workers United did not immediately respond to requests for comment. So nobody's talking, okay? Nobody's saying a word. And you know what? They, they've been trying to organize these guys for a long time, and it's, it never worked. I mean, the, the Honda, Honda's probably been the toughest, the one in Tennessee. That's a tough plant to get in. They, they've been trying for ages. The United Auto Workers Union said Monday, it filed unfair labor practices charges, practice charges, against Honda Motor, Hyundai Motor, and Volkswagen, citing aggressive anti-union campaigns to deter workers from organizing. Yeah, it's the Volkswagen plant in Tennessee. Oh my God! The UAW said last month it was launching a first-of-its-kind push to publicly organize the entire non-union auto sector in the U.S. after winning a record contracts from the Detroit Three. 
Well, yeah, they did a good job there. I'll give them that. The UAW filed charges over actions by Honda in Indiana, Hyundai in Alabama, and Volkswagen in Tennessee. That's that Tennessee plant, boy. A Honda worker said management illegally told workers to remove union stickers from hats, the UAW said. Oh, jeez. Hyundai illegally polled employees about their support for the UAW and confiscated union materials and barred their dis- distribution in non-work areas, the union charged. So, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're fighting them. Honda and Hyundai did not immediately comment. The UAW and v- said VW threatened and coerced employees from exercising rights to engage in a protected or engage in protected activity by prohibiting employees from discussing unionization during working time and restricting employees from distributing union materials. So if you're caught talking union at lunchtime, they're going to they're going to throw you out. That's a little tough. Volkswagen said on Monday, it respects our workers' right to determine who should represent their interests in the workplace. We take claims like this very seriously and will investigate accordingly. No, they won't. Who, who's kidding who here? I mean, come on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a, one of my favorite lines about government. We investigated ourselves and we found we did we, nothing we wrong. We found we did nothing wrong, yes. <clears throat> That's the problem. Who is watching the who's watching the store here? Who's taking care of business? The the different the, the union organization is a big deal. I mean a very big deal. Very costly to the manufacturers. I can understand why they don't want if they're non-union, I can understand why they'd like to keep the union out, let me tell you. Because they're saving billions of dollars. But if I'm a worker in their plant, I can understand why I might want the union in there. And and you, I, I always said the union makes sure you have trained people putting your sixty thousand dollar car together. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that's not a, a, a schmutz putting your uh, your sixty your big your fancy car putting it together for you. Do they do they have UAW approved glue? Yes, they have. Good. They have UAW. They have glue from Europe. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, and that German glue. German glue, and that doesn't hold anything. We know this to we know this to be a fact. We know this is right, because they, they, Mercedes can't keep a window in the car. Neither can Porsche or Audi. Anyway, I just want people to know that you get, you get a much better worker when you have a union in your plant. You, uh, you have trained workers. You have, you have workers that are, are loyal, that show up. It's a different ballgame, because the union will fire you if you don't show up. If you're a no-show, if you're one of these guys that works three days and says, ah, i got to take a day off, it's killing me. No, they don't, they don't play that game. The union will not do that. But the union also wants higher wages, more benefits, bigger benefits, better benefits, and they want better working conditions and probably a little more money for training. and different. It's all different. The non-union, the unorganized plants are, are not anywhere anything like the regular plants, as far as the as far as the employees go, the employees are they're just as they're just as probably just as dedicated, but I don't think they have the training. I don't know if I don't know if Volkswagen puts their people through a, a massive training schedule. I know the union requires it, and they want you to make sure that <laughs> that you put the car together right. I mean, we see these recalls every. Every week, Chuck, we at least got one recall about an airbag or a window flying off or a nut or bolt that's not tightened or, you know, come on. You got those kind of employees, a union's not going to help you. <laughs> you need to get rid of those guys. And if you want to get rid of somebody, the union can help you get rid of them if they have, if they're bad, if they're not good employees. If they're good employees... You got you got to go a long way to try and get rid of them because the good employees, good solid union employees, will stay and do a good job for you, and you have no other reason to get rid of them except that they're in the union. Well, then guess what? That's not right either. That's just how it works, and it's just I don't know. I don't know. I I, I want to say that I I'm a, I'm not pro union and I'm not anti union. I, I know I say this all the time, but I I just want to see. 
our cars built correctly. I want to see this recalls that I read off every week. I want to see that go down to like one or two and not a big pile of them. I want to see these cars built nice. The NHTSA can go jump in a lake for all I care. Okay? That's just, I mean, what are you going to do? I don't know. Anyway, Chuck, we're going to build these cars. We're going to build them the way we build them, and that's it. We're not going to, right now, we're not going to let the union in. I like that. No, no stickers on your hat. You can't have a UAW sticker on your hat. Why not? Can I have a can I have a Elon Musk sticker on my hat? Well, not if I work for Volkswagen, I can't. <laughs> That's the competition. And in reality, the UAW is the competition of the manufacturer, actually. All right, that's enough of that. I, I just that we're gonna take a blitz around the car business here now because I got oh, I got stuff. The oil giants whose gasoline brands adorn the nation's corners and highway filling stations have a plan to maintain the place powering Americans maintain their place powering Americans' vehicles. Along with a fuel with fuel pumps, they'll offer electric vehicle charging stations. Aha, how about that? Major EV electric vehicle charging network consolidation is coming. And coming, and we don't have any charging stations, uh, analysts say, and many of the companies poised to dominate the market are fossil fuel heavyweights. It's just a matter of when, not if, said Brent Castilli, an energy and utilities analyst for Morningstar Research Services. It's coming in and I would say the next couple of years. Some analysts predict consolidation within 18 months. I, I, you know, uh, I, I'll get into this in a minute. The current charging model isn't profitable. No. Startups that have shaped the nation's charging infrastructure, such as ChargePoint, EVgo, and Blink. Why would you call your company Blink? All Blink or Fluid. All reported... I, I get a kick out of that, Chuck. Recent large losses. They are reliant on a number of factors outside of their control to earn a profit, including on-time EV, EV electric vehicle launches, which are being held back now, especially for commercial vehicles, smooth and rapid infrastructure expansion. That's not happening with coordination between utilities and local municipalities and regulatory approvals and more. You know, they, they talk to us like, this is all inevitable. This, all this electricity is inevitable and you're going to have to do that. You haven't got it done yet. Shell uses 160, Shell USA, 169 million cash purchase of Volta's 3,000 charges across 31 states. 3,000 charges across 31 states. That's like passing gas in a windstorm. I mean, 3,000 charges in 31 states? That's nothing. That's nothing. In, in March was the first hint of the sweeping consolidation that's likely to come. I don't see it coming. BP is on an electric vehicle spending spree. Its EV charging business, BP Pulse, oh, well, that's a very catchy name, purchased 100 million of chargers from Tesla in October, marking the first time the automaker's ultra-fast chargers were acquired for deployment by an independent electric vehicle charging network. So BP Pulse is the first one to buy Tesla's chargers from them and be done with it. But oil and gas companies foray into electrification extends beyond charging. They are, they're bad. It's an open market for them, said America Covetous. Emilia Cardavanius, ooh, EV charging infrastructure analyst at Wood McKenzie, an electric research and consulting firm. Traditional oil and gas, and gas companies are looking at other fuel sources, such as hydrogen and critical resources as well. So here we are again. We got this great big big old cart in front of the the horse. What are we doing? What is going on here? Who you know what? 
I'll say it, I've said it before on this show, and I say it almost every week, nothing makes sense anymore. I got to tell you, Chuck, we just did a story, we just did a couple of stories about this whole infrastructure and all this electricity, and why do they keep preaching to us like this is all good, it's all ready to go? Are we ready to go? Well, okay, so what the oil companies are dealing with is very simple, similar to what the car manufacturers are dealing with, is they have the unknown of government regulation. Will they make us? Will they not make us? Will people have a choice? Will they not? I mean, imagine if you are, who, who do you, like, like let's say um, Exxon is the dominant gas station in California. They now know we've got, 11 years left of gas in California. Not only are they going after the cars, they're going after the lawn mowers, they're going after everything that uses gas. Gas stoves. So if I'm if I'm in charge of, you know, Exxon California or Sunoco or whoever, California, I go, I got to do something because in about 10 years, the main reason everybody stops at my gas station is to get gas and they're not going to do that anymore if California has their way. I got to do something to get people to stop in. They're trying to be ready. So they're, so just like the car manufacturers are sitting here awake at night going, are we going to build internal combustion engines next year or are we not? Are we going to shut up, shut down that plant or are we not in five years? They're thinking the same thing. Like, what am I going to do here? Am I going to start replacing gas pumps with EV chargers? What am I going to, you know, just like, uh, you know, we, told, we talked about that story a few weeks ago about how Elon was going to have like a drive-in. Um, and, and he wanted it because you need to do, you're not there for 10 minutes. Now you're there for an hour or more. Oh, so you yeah. need something to do a couple hours, sometimes. maybe a couple hours, depending on the weight. So, I mean, that becomes a whole thing. I mean, now I was, I was thinking the other day is like, you know, I, I keep hearing about Bucky's, you know, you've heard Bucky's and you haven't been to one, right? No. So Bucky's is a big thing down South. These giant gas stations, a hundred pumps. You almost need like a Bucky's where you go there and they've got, you know, they've got beef jerky. They've got donuts they've got you know you can go grocery shopping and clothes shopping you almost need like a bucky's because i'm going to park there i'm going to plug in my ch- you're going to need a hundred places to plug in and sit there for an hour i need something to do so that's the whole thing well, is that yeah. that's going to be the new model but they're they're putting it forward to us much like you just started off saying like this is going to happen it's it depending on government but the government's going to make you buy an electric car the government is going to tell you what kind of car to drive listen to me the need for cars, a vehicle, is never going to end. You're not going to end up riding the bus. Nobody's going to ride that, the that, bus. That's part of the plan is to get you to not drive as much. Well, I mean, there's that's, gonna part, be of, a, that's there's, part of the but big picture. But there's going to be a need for vehicles. Agreed. Right. Electric vehicles do not fit everybody's needs. Right. That's the problem.